mortals of Earth. A brilliant scientist is dead. Nuno Felipe Gomez Lorero, MIT professor, plasma physicist, fusion researcher, mentor, and leader, was shot and killed in his apartment at just 47 years old. A man working at the frontier of plasma physics, magnetic reconnection, fusion energy, a mind helping humanity move closer to clean, abundant power. And now, he's gone. No suspect, no motive, no explanation. And I wish this were the first time we'd seen something like this. Because history has a way of whispering, sometimes a little too clearly. This isn't the first time someone working on truly transformative energy technologies has met a sudden, almost unbelievable end. We're talking about technologies that could change civilization itself, make deserts bloom, clean up pollution, stabilize the climate, usher in an age of real abundance. And instead of celebrating or protecting those breakthroughs, what do we see? Online smear campaigns, coordinated attacks on inventors, even attacks on people who dare to defend free speech or challenge the status quo. Have you noticed that? It's as if someone really wants us kept in a box, a box of stress, dependence, fear, and constant conflict. We're bathed in flickering blue light, exhausting, addictive, and surrounded by more EMF smog than ever before. And when I say more, I mean orders of magnitude more than even 10 years ago. To truly grasp how much radiation now penetrates our blood-brain barrier, you'd have to start counting. One, two, three all the way back to the formation of the universe, and you still wouldn't be finished today. That increase isn't incremental, it's astronomical, quadrillions of times greater than it was just a decade ago. And somehow, we're told this is all normal. Take Stanley Meyer, the man behind the so-called water fuel cell. He collapsed after a dinner meeting, reportedly saying he'd been poisoned. His death was ruled natural causes. Case closed. Questions? Not so much. Or Eugene Malov, an MIT-trained physicist and one of the most vocal critics of how cold fusion research was buried. He was brutally murdered in 2004, officially labeled a robbery gone wrong. Another dead end. Even Nikola Tesla, who claimed breakthroughs that could have made energy nearly free, died isolated and broke, and his papers seized before his body was even cold. Now let me be very clear, as of right now, there is no evidence that Nuno Larrero's murder is connected to his work. None. But it would also be dishonest to ignore the pattern. Over and over again, people working near the edges of energy, power generation, or paradigm-shifting physics don't just meet resistance, they get erased. Funding disappears, reputations are attacked, research gets sidelined, and sometimes the people themselves vanish. Fusion energy threatens trillion-dollar systems. Abundant power destabilizes control structures, and real paradigm shifts they're never welcomed by entrenched interests. So I'm not here to accuse anyone. I'm here to ask questions. Why do so many pioneers working toward humanity's energetic liberation meet such abrupt ends? Why are investigations so often left unresolved? And why does progress so frequently stall at the human level, not the technical one? Nuno Larrero wasn't some fringe outsider. He was establishment science, MIT, fellow of the American Physical Society, presidential award recipient, director of one of the world's most important plasma research centers. If this can happen to someone like him, what does that say 
about how fragile truth becomes when it approaches real transformation. We owe it to his family. We owe it to his students. And we owe it to civilization itself to demand transparency. We owe it to science to remember the names, not just the equations. And we owe it to the future to stay awake when history starts to rhyme. This isn't about conspiracy. It's about vigilance. That's all for now. Stay curious and have a good one.